Hey there, everybody. This is Joshua with The Virtual Chef, and we're going to show you how to make some cheesy potato soup. All right, so now what we're going to be making is basically like a thin version of a sauce that's called bechamel. It's basically a cheese sauce. We're going to start out by making a roux, which is more or less a fat with some flour mixed in, and then we're going to add some milk to it to thin it out. And in the end, we'll end up adding a little bit of water to get it to the correct consistency. So start out by melting your butter over about medium heat. I'm using a large uh, Lodge cast iron Dutch oven. This is the uh, five quart variety. And this right here, I don't, I had never even heard of these until about a month or so ago. But this is a, called a roux whisk. It's designed to easily be able to whisk the bottom of a pot or pan in order to make a roux for different sauces and gravies and things like that. But you can use a regular whisk if you don't have one of these, but I love this thing. Typically, this is done uh, like a one-to-one -one ratio by weight, but if you don't have a scale, I'm going to start with close to a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Um, if this turns out a little bit too thin, I'll just add a little bit more, and we'll show you what it looks like. So start adding in your flour, whisk it in, whisking it in, making sure to not leave any clumps. And this feels like it's probably going to be about the right amount. I don't add them in too much at once. And I'm feeling maybe just a little bit more on the flour. Okay. You can see that's sticking up really fast. So keep it moving. I'm going to let it cook down and thicken just a little bit more. Then I'm going to slowly start pouring in some milk. Add in just a tiny bit more flour, not much. This is one of those things you have to kind of play with. Honestly, if you don't have a scale to measure it, it's better to, to just kind of start with your butter and shake in the flour until it feels right. The flour is less dense than butter, so that's going true. by volume measurement, it's going to... It's hard to do, yeah. yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it now. So now, start mixing in some milk. Again, keep it moving. You can see it almost instantly thickens when you do that. So mix it in. Try not to, to let it clump up and sit still too long. Here comes some more. Pour it in really fast that time. It's okay. I got it. Got my backup gallon of milk over here. You can see every time I add the milk, it's immediately thickening back up. I'm not really thinning it out with the milk because the milk is kind of part of it. Get some more in there. And at some point, we're going to stop and call this good, and we will end up th thinning it out with some water, because this is going to become the base for our soup. Okay, so now after continuing adding a little bit of milk and keeping it, uh, keeping on stirring it, I've gotten to about this consistency right here. It's a really nice, thick, creamy sauce that, obviously, it's going to fall through the whisk, but you can kind of see how it looks. And uh, what I've got over here is four large potatoes, peeled and diced. I have carrots, celery, and onions, and the way that they're combined together, this is usually called mirepoix in uh, French cuisine or just in cooking class in general. Uh, I've got some garlic in there. I think I've got about a head worth of garlic, so however many cloves we got out of the head. And I've got some cheese here. I'm using a Fiesta Blend Mexican cheese. You can use whatever kind of cheese you want. My hands are clean. I'm going to get a good handful of cheese, sprinkle it over the sauce. You just got to kind of stir that in there. Probably going to get another half a handful or so. There we go. And 
Congratulations, now, your mirepoix or your your bechamel has evolved to cheese sauce. Yes. Okay, so now taking our, our potatoes and everything else, putting it on down into the pot. And there's some water that's going to go on top of this. I'm just going to try to incorporate it all together. Man, this is going to make a lot of soup. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. <laughs> I am too. All right. So just go ahead and fold everything together. Depending on, uh, most likely you won't have a, a whisk exactly like this. So at this point, I would switch from a whisk to a spoon. Because I don't think you can take a normal whisk and do this with it. If you can, I want to see it. By the way, I've turned, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I turned the heat down to low while I'm getting this all ready. I'll turn it back up once we get everything mixed. All right, got a bit of water. Just got some in a bowl. Add it in. And as this cooks, you're going to notice, you see that right now it's kind of thinning out that whole mixture, but as it cooks, it's going to thicken up, so you're going to end up with a really nice, creamy soup. There we go. A little bit more water. And again, I'm not measuring the water. I just basically, this is one of those things you eyeball. I'm giving you the guidelines, but you can do what you want to do with it. We've got a lot of good flavor here already from all the veggies, the potatoes, the carrots, the onions, all that good stuff. But I'm still going to add a bit of salt and pepper. Just got a bit of sea salt. Let's get a little bit here. That's probably enough. Let's just sprinkle it around. Got me some regular pepper, black pepper. If you have it, a little bit of white pepper is good in this too. Just gonna get a nice coating over the top, then I'll stir it in. Sometimes I like to almost overdo it on the pepper. I like it really peppery, but not everybody does, so I'm gonna go normal-ish. Again, I like to start from the bottom. Kind of bring the stuff from the bottom up to the top, and start around this way. All right, this is smelling really good, so I think we're pretty much set here. So now, let's go ahead and turn the heat back up. I'm gonna put it on about seven or so on my stove. I'm gonna let it come up to a boil. Then what I think I'm gonna do is just turn it down to low after that, cover it up and let it simmer. All right, so to go with the soup, I'm making some uh, homemade bread. Uh, I've got uh, approximately some flour, a little bit of salt, a pinch of sugar, and approximately a little bit of yeast. And that's about what we need. Typically this is two and a quarter teaspoons if you want to get super technical. But I just throw the crap in there, get some liquid at it, and shape it and it'll be ready to bake. Because I'm using instant yeast. I got it up to a boil. I made sure to stir it pretty frequently so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Now I'm I've turned it down it's just going to simmer while we wait on the rest of While we wait on the rest of our stuff, please excuse. Westfully what it. Yes, my, my W's and my R's don't want to work together today. Anyway, I'm going to throw some oil in this and I'm going to get it in my mixer. Hey, don't poke it. I said don't poke it. Thank you for poking it, though. Now you know it's ready. So uh, the bread, I'm just going to really quickly uh, brush it with a little bit of uh, lukewarm water. I don't know why there's some science behind this, but for whatever reason, this helps to crisp up, not necessarily crisp up, but it makes a more brown crust. I think it's something to do with the steam that comes off of it or something, but whatever the reason, it's what I'm doing. Brush them with a little bit of more lukewarm water. If you do water that's too cold, it will deflate the dough. So just brush that on there. Now, I have a really sharp paring knife, and I'm going to score it, which is basically going to make three small slashes across the top of the dough. One here, one down the middle, one on this edge. This will help the dough to rise up instead of to the side. It's going into a 450 degree oven for about 20 or 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, let's take a look at the soup. The soup is ready. It's just been on low holding warm for a while. Now you can see it's got a really nice creamy texture. 
one way that I like to show that it's to the thickness I like it, I get something like this right here, and I'll scrape it from the sides. See how it takes just a minute to fill the shape? Instead of it really watery, it would just fall right in there. You can scrape it to the side and actually see the bottom for a portion of a second. But it's ready to go. We're just going to wait on the bread, and the potato soup will be ready. It's one final step, though. We'll get... Final step before we get ready to serve the potato soup, I'd like to throw some sour cream in. Uh, this is a 16 ounce container. I'm going to use about most of it. Just leave a little bit in there, but about visually that much. I've also got a little bit of dill weed. That actually gives it a pretty nice color, too. It's going to mm -hmm. add a little bit of tang to it without being. Too much. Unfortunately, they still haven't invented smell o vision <laughs> Yeah, but we've needed that for years. Well, that's, that's a, this is what I say every time I try something. Let's give it a shot. Well, let's give it another shot. <laughs> Alright, my portion is ready, so let me just... <laughs> So I don't know if you can see this right here really good, but this is just again to show you the consistency of the soup. It's a very, very thick cream base. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and get a bit in the bowl. And I made a mess of it, but that's okay because I've got somebody who does the hard work of plating it and making it look pretty, so I don't have to. And that's all. <laughs> Alright, bread's out of the oven. I'm going to transfer it over here to my board. There we go. I'm going to grab a slice off the end of it really quick. Got a paper towel to keep from burning myself. This is a nice crusty bread that will be good for soaking up some of the soup. I'm going to get that off of there. There we go. Put it over here by our potato soup. Got a little bit of a uh, garlic and herb compound butter for anybody that wants it on the bread. And uh, anything else we got to add here? Nope. As always, by the time we get done with these videos, I think all of us are way more hungry than is really good for us. <laughs> but uh, before I get to eating this, I just want to say thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. If you want to keep seeing stuff like this and give me some money to do so, you can support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash thevirtualchef. That's all for now, and we will see you next week or sooner.